Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Throwback Thursday. Or for the first time. Oh, or for the first time, if this was your, if this is your first time with us. We've been throwing back to the video since the start of the pandemic. It's 2020, uh, in case you're watching this many years from now. But today, we're throwing back to one of our favorite games of all time. We didn't play it the first time around. We did play it the second time around, though. It's called Netrunner. It was originally published by Wizards of the Coast, uh, designed by Richard Garfield, who also did such hits sounds familiar. as Magic the Gathering about it. and Keyforge more recently. Yeah. Um, anyways, it was designed in the 90s. It's about hacking into servers and like someone's a corp and they have these agendas and the runner's trying to steal them and prevent you know world uh, domination, etc. It's kind of it's kind of like a really great it, one of the reasons the mechanics of Netrunner are so good is that it's basically like hide and seek. On steroids, it's like the great. It's all the dopamine of finding things, uh, and all the dopamine of hiding things, plus all of the traditional card game stuff as well. You're building a board over time. You got to manage your money. You got to manage your credits over time. But it's it's. I think what made it so unique because again, you have to roll the clock back to the mid '90s, right? And give me the history, right? So we we had this one, and then we'll get into Android one. In yeah. Second. So even before that, though, in '93, right? At some point, in 1993. Uh, the world didn't know what a collectible card game was. So baseball cards were super popular. And then Wizards of the Coast, uh, Peter Atkinson and Richard Garfield uh, put together Magic. And Magic came out and it took the world by storm, changed the entire industry. And a lot of card games since, and like in the 90s and early 2000s, there was called the CCG Gold Rush. Yeah, then it, it just took off. Yeah, it was like every two point. weeks there was a new CCG based on a different IP because people saw how successful Magic was, and they were just trying to like get in on it. And of course, a few games from that time actually ended up standing the test of time. Pokemon being one of them, mm -hmm. Yu-Gi-Oh being another, and they now make up the big three, which is something that's referenced quite often uh, because they're just such a staple in the tabletop gaming industry. But in that time, Richard there were Garfield, thousands that did not make it. A lot. Buffy a the whole... Vampire. I remember old Buffy the Vampire Star game I used to play. Well, we've been featuring a lot of them, didn't we? Even Middle Earth CCG. Yeah. Which is a one that I've fallen in love with from the 90s. So it came out in the 2000s. But the, the most interesting thing to me is like the more macro design of it, where a lot of games basically are somewhat derivative of Magic. And some are more, some are less. But I'm the a thing, attack each other, play some stuff. We're attacking each other, trying yeah. to do damage. And so, like you said, this is, this is more like hide and seek. Uh, which is what makes it so crazy, because one player is the corp. They have these cards in their deck called an agenda that are worth points. Me, the runner in this first game at least, I'm trying to hack in and find them, and that's how I score. And you're trying to put them out and advance them, which is how you score. And that the like architecture of this game is so different, which is really cool. Yeah. Because when you actually look at like the design catalog of Richard Garfield, he has done such a wide array of like ways of playing a game that aren't just I have a thing, you have a thing, we're attacking yeah, each other. Yeah, no, it's totally true. So uh, this one comes out, it has a has a bit of a life. Obviously, a lot of people fall in love with it. It, it. It's so sad because like during this CCG era, you had enough people that there was a critical mass to like really fall in love with something and dedicate, you know, whether it's Warlord or Netrunner or the Mythos CCG, like all these things that we've been playing, but not quite enough people to, to keep it going, to kind of raise to the ranks of one of these big three all-time continue selling games. So many people throughout history, ourselves included, get hooked on these kinds of games, and then the rug gets pulled out from under you, they don't make enough money, and all of a sudden the game goes away. And Netrunner is one of those games, but it had a very fervent following because it was so different and because it was so... The, the mechanics are so high quality. Just the way that the game works together, it functions perfectly. It's like every piece is clicked in uh, exactly where it needs to be. And so it went away. And then a while later, uh, tell me the dates when FFG launched theirs. So it was mid-90s when the original came out. And then it only lasted a couple of years. And then it went away like a lot of those CCGs did. And part of the problem back then was that there were so many CCGs coming out that if the meta was getting stale or it was broken or people weren't liking where the game was going. Hop, hop ship. There was a new game to try yeah. and there was new excitement and that's a lot, like today there's a lot less CCGs coming out on a regular basis. Um, there's maybe a couple a year at best. And for a while there, there were very few coming out. Like there's maybe one-ish a year. Uh, but advance the clock to 2012. It was 2012, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, in 2012. So a little bit before that, Fantasy Flight had been making the Game of Thrones CCG. And this was the 2000s. And essentially, at some point, there were not enough people, because part of the CCG model is that like you need a good number of people buying into it 
to make it worth doing the collation process of randomization and collectability and that whole thing. But at some point, the community for the Game of Thrones game uh, became small enough that it really didn't make sense to make it a collectible game anymore. So they invented a format called the Living Card Game. And I actually think it was their Call of Cthulhu game they did this first with. Yeah, it started um, with, yeah. Which is cool, like a, it basically looking for another way to make these sus games sustainable and to keep supporting your communities. But the Game of Thrones LCG uh, was uh, the CCG transitioning into the LCG. And so by 2012, they had the Call of Cthulhu LCG, the Game of Thrones LCG, they had launched the Lord of the Rings LCG. Yeah. And so that year, they actually also launched X 2012 X-Wing, which was mm -hmm. a massive game. That was a big one. Uh, but at that same Gen Con, it was really crazy because the, uh, the summer before Netrunner was coming out at Gen Con, there was rumors that it was going to get brought back. And we, 2012, was also when we opened our store for the first time, our yep. local store. We've been a company since 2007, but 2012, we opened an actual store. And one of the people who had been regularly coming was Matt Garrett, who actually lent, lent me these decks for us to play here. The, the funny thing is, so what we're playing with here are the exact first decks that we ever learned Netrunner on in 2012 from a local Matt Gary, who's a great guy, uh, said, hey, we hear that Netrunner's coming back. Do you want to see what the original's like? And yeah. we said, yes. And then I remember when I first played this game, I was like, this is like nothing I've ever played before. And I'm immediately so taken by it yeah. that it became kind of like a... Uh. Yeah, he actually left the decks with us at the store, so we got to play a lot of this leading up to Gen Con 2012. This was all the hype, and then they also had X-Wing on top of it, which is crazy. Um, and that was one of the craziest Gen Cons I've ever seen. Fun little story. A lot so like, going on that Gen Con. If you give me the top down really quick, I'll show yeah. you a, a good example. So, like, let's say this is, like, 20 feet by 10 feet. And this is a booth at Gen Con. You know? Each car. Okay, I'm with you. You, yeah, have, yeah, yeah. you, have, okay. you have a bunch of booths, right? And they're doing their mm -hmm. thing, and you can walk between them. Uh, so, like, this is the, the uh, FFG booth. And basically, they just had stacks and stacks of X-Wing and Netrunner that you could, like, mm -hmm. go grab. And then people get in line. And the line literally, like, went all the way to, like, the edge of the arena. Yeah. Like, there's this big, big facility, edge of the whatever you call that. It's not an arena. The convention hall the convention or whatever. Hall. And then it kept going all the way. You can see my finger going all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way, <laughs> literally to the corner of the room. And then it kept going away from me. all the way, all the way, all the way. <laughs> it actually came all Leave the way alone. back around. <laughs> And we're talking like, I mean, it's the biggest line I've ever seen yep. for anything. Yeah. And the crazy thing to me is like you have people there standing there with like eight copies of the Netrunner corset or X-Wing and they have both. And it was just like, I kept thinking as we were walking by trying to get past all these people to get around the convention, it was like, what's stopping any of these people from just walking away just with walking this box? Uh, just good people. That's what's stopping. And that is one of, the, one of the things that has given me faith in humanity, which is good. But it was super exciting. And then the game came out, the LCG came out. And we had opened a store, and it became a huge thing at our local store. Uh, we were working a lot of hours at that store, but part of what helped us get through those years was having Netrunner around and having all the people that played Netrunner locally. One of the best communities I've ever been a part of. So good. Fantastic people. Had such good times. We traveled for regionals. We recorded a ton of videos for all Android over. Netrunner um, World Championships. I met a ton of friends. I got super involved in the game personally. Um, I think that the Netrunner mechanics, I think, are the best in the industry. I, I don't think there's a game that plays better than this game. Uh, it's truly a miraculous uh, game design. I think it's the best that there is. Uh, so my bias is is there. So it's just be, be aware of that. Um, and I'll tell you, anybody from Wizards listening? You guys listen? Let's go. If you make it in whatever format you want to make it in, I will be here on camera shilling for it until it's gone. Uh, right now. You, you release as a collectible card game. Doesn't matter. I'll get on camera and I'll say, everybody's got to be playing collectible card games. Got to be playing Netrunner. The, this is the one. The reason I love it as a collectible card game is because collectible card games get support on a level that is unlike anything else. And I can't imagine Netrunner with that kind of environment. Anyways, so it comes out. Uh, Please do something with it. It's it, so good. It does phenomenally well for several years. And then uh, I think it was the Mumbad cycle of products was kind of like a low point for the game. Mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, our friend who at the time was head of studio of Fantasy Flight Games, Andrew Navarro, huge, he did a lot of the art direction for the game, loved the game as well. Uh, this is kind of like super cult classic. Everyone still, oh, it. hold on. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to show art, the folks yeah. are. Uh, and so he, he had become head of studio and he put together this awesome plan to basically rejuvenate and bring the game back. And they did a revised core set. Yeah, look at this. It's like the original concept core set art. Yeah. Floating Steven. It's a core set right You there. can see it going from like sketch all the way to like finalized, which is fantastic. Love this piece of art. 
Uh, so they did a revised core set. It was went, received extremely well. We actually did a learning uh, Netrunner series that you can find on YouTube, lot, breaking it all down, super extensive tutorials and whatnot. Um, we love the game. It's fantastic. The revised was also fantastic. And then uh, one reason or another, FFG lost the license to the game. I, I don't know the details behind all that, but had to stop making it. The game ended, and then a community-led group called the Nisei Project took up the cup. They've released several sets since then. They've been doing organized play, and that's still going active and strong today. But what we're playing is the original 90s version. In fact, the World Championship 2020 is apparently this weekend. Or it's like happening now. Really? Yeah, but it's all online. I didn't know obviously. that. That's good timing. Yeah. No, the community has done a phenomenal job of keeping things going there. Um, I wish that it was not as legally dubious for us to kind of like print those cards, because I would love to be able to print them and do a subscription for like continuing Netrunner. But... But they're definitely operating in some interesting. There, there's gray a great space. space. It's always there. a great. But like nobody really has, nobody really knows like where the lines between how much worlds they, is tomorrow. By the way, isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? That's, that's good timing. I didn't know that. Somebody was in marketing really knew what yeah, they were doing. It was really well planned. We keep falling into these things. There's, there's some. Nobody really. Ha, I don't think we've sussed out how similar can a design of a game be to another game before it's treading on any kind of a trademark copyright situation. I don't know. But anyway, we're not going to be at the forefront of that fight because we don't have the money or the time to fight those lawsuits, ladies and gentlemen. What we're going to do instead is we're going to play some original Netrunner CCG. We're going to see how different it is, how much it has changed, how similar it is. We're going to have a good time with it. And uh, we hope you'll join us, and we're going to get right into it now. And we Let's also, go. beyond the learning Netrunner series we did, there's also, we threw back to the, the LCG a couple months ago. So if you want to see that incarnation of it, you can go back and watch that video as well. Um, so each player starts with five credits, which are these tokens we're using here. We actually made a compatible set of tokens back in 2012 or 2013 called Data Tokens Data. that were built uh, to be compatible with this game. There's a wait list for them on our website. You can sign up. Once enough people sign up, we produce a, a batch of those, and then we ship them out, and we keep doing that. Uh, we've been doing that for a couple of years. So it's phenomenal that something we designed in 2013 is still, still kicking around. I'm using this uh, Teclo Foundry heart here from Flesh and Blood, uh, another trading card game, to m signal my headquarters. So if you want to follow along, and it will help you, of course, uh, immediately to know, this is called my R&D. This is where my ideas come from, also known as a deck in other, every other card Research game. Research and development. Research, thank you. But it's R&D. This is my HQ. This is going to correlate to my hands. So if you think about this as a server in the game, if Zach comes into this server, he gets to look at my hand. If he comes into this server, he gets to look at the top card of my deck or R&D. And then whenever I discard cards, I have a discard file. It's called my archives. And whenever uh, a runner wants to run at that part of my uh, board, they get to look through all the things in my discard pile. Meanwhile, so. as the runner, I don't have any of that stuff. I just have a grip, which is what's in my hand. Uh, also, I thought this was a funny comment. I don't know I don't know what it says necessarily about us, but Andrew says, I'm not comfortable with Steven staring his corp. I think Zach's supposed to be playing the bad guys. Yeah, that um, is true. Who said the corpse the bad oh, guys? Well, I'm. Uh, I feel like I'm the anarchist runner and trying to like break the law and get in and get your private data. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, look at the state of the world right now. Would you really say the corpse are the good guys? Is anybody really going to believe that? <laughs> Robert slowly says, "What level of bribe and or sacrifice is required for you guys to play with the current Nisei cards?" We actually used None. the Nisei yeah, cards we used that the on other the day. throwback the other day. That was like months ago now. I just get confused um, by all the changes. You know, we love Netrunner, so it's not exactly unlikely that we would do it again. But I will say, one of the most helpful things for us to be able to do content that doesn't like economically make a lot of sense for us to do, because we don't run ads. I, I hate ads. I won't go into the, onto that soapbox. Uh, we have a content membership. People can sign up. It's 20 bucks a month. At the moment, there's no benefits for doing that other than you directly support our content. We're working on some stuff uh, on that direction, but we'll see what that ends up being. So if you want to see more of whatever crazy content you'd like to see, that's a really good way to, to move that direction. It's just easier. Uh, and Jeremy Dale Port has the, the right of it here. If Wizards and CD Projekt Red, they just said the Cyberpunk 2077. Is it 2077, Bryce? Yeah, that's right. Um, they, if they made a Netrunner CCG and released that thing, or a, an LCG style, ECG, whatever it is, put some cards out, officially support it, get organized play going, get your, you know, get the whole thing. I would, I would love it. 
This system, you can do anything with this system. I would love it. Put a bunch of money pony. into it. Here's the thing. I do my Put Little Pony now. Put a ton of money into it. Have amazing art, amazing car templating. I know, yeah. Can you imagine My Little Pony Runner? Don't you remember there was that Victorian uh, uh, reskin of that runner? Man. It was so good. And the runner was actually like a, a quarter. You were trying to, to to court the princess or whatever. Yeah. And then the the corp was like all the Absolutely. barons and stuff trying to prevent you from uh, Would do. making it happen. You could, I mean, you put it, slap everything on it. Make it compatible. You can be a baron and I can, you know, be an X-Wing. I don't know. <laughs> you be a Baron, I'll be an X-Wing. That's right. I'm drawing five. The most romantic tale. Now, here's what I want to show you. I'm just going to name a random card in my hand, and we're going to make sure it pops up. But look at the beauty of... This card is called Networking. And uh, we're going to see if this hits. And the I beauty just, of Networking. I want you to see everything about this. Yeah, look at this card. A few things to note. Cop God, it takes me right back to, like, Biker Mice from Mars. And, Isn't like, it crazy? Toad, look at the little, like, just old school the little wires feel, down here and things and whatnot. It's just uh, great. Anyways, uh, the Reboot. name's on the top left, obviously. The top right with the, like, spiky thing behind it as the credit cost. They didn't call them credits in the original game, but we're going to call them that. What they call them? Dollar EDs? Bits. Bits? Yep. Mm, better. Uh, it says prep double. So, uh... Play a double prep cost two consecutive actions instead of one. We had that in OG Netrunner. And then it just, Android Netrunner. it just resolves and does its thing. So we're going to dive in and uh, feel free to explain what you're doing or not. We'll, okay. If you have questions, please let us know. I will chat. absolutely explain. Uh, but I imagine a lot of people watching this are probably doing it for the uh, for the nostalgia, not necessarily to learn the game. The mnemonics. If we're familiar with Android, will this feel a lot different? Uh, it'll look different. There's it's some, the same. It's the same core game, though. Um... Okay. Okay. Oh, wow. Cool. All right. Let's do this. I like that they uh they don't give you a lot of good they don't give you a lot of good like information on this is an ice. This is an upgrade. There's upgrade. That says ice. This says node and I think that means that I can put it on my remote servers. Um I better move. Yep. So I'm going to do install I'm going to install here. And you see this cost a click. And then I'm going to gain a credit. And you get three clicks. I'm never going to use those. All right. I get four clicks. And you I don't have, to, four action don't have to draw or anything crazy. Um, you have six money, huh? Let's, yeah. Let's run R&D. Yeah, you're just going to make me own it, huh? I mean, this is Netrunner. A lot of times people will be scared to run into a face down piece of ice. But that's one of the actions I can do. I can run any of his servers. And so I'm running here. I won't res. I approach that ice. He doesn't res it. Now I get to see the random top card. You don't get to see it. That's not how this works. I just wanted the stream to see it. It's a data wall. Now the stream will really see it. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's first click. Now let's spend the second and third click on networking. So it cost me three credits, and it says uh, gain nine. Some would say you would net six there. It's a good, good trade. <laughs> yeah, I like these little baby five credits. I yeah, forgot that we I, made them smaller. I don't know. Is, is that what we did in the last? They look one? way better. Look at how much better they look than yeah, these. Yeah, they they are crisp. I like the font down there. Yeah, absolutely. It's like silly. Um, come back in. Come on. And then I'll get a credit. Oh, money, huh? So I've got to draw the first of my turn. I think I forgot to do that. I also am going to res this at the start of the turn. It's a BBS whispering campaign. What to do? Uh, put 16 on the bank from it, and then I take two every time I take an action. So it's it's uh, there was a card in Android that did this exact thing. Basically, I now mm -hmm. can spin an action for two clicks instead. And I get 16. I do it eight times. Oof. Who's laughing now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm a token cash out guy. I don't like to put the credits on it. You got it. Okay, first action I'm going to draw. Is it a data wall? <laughs> I already drew that. Uh, second oh, action. Yeah, yeah. Install here. Third action, I'm going to spend it to gain two credits. Chris says, Zach was defending large corporations, and now he's only using his credits or his actions to make money. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> All right. Mine? All oh, yours. Now you have more money. I got more money, more time. Now, one of the crazy things about the CCG also that you guys should know, there was no 
limit the number of copies of cards you can run in your deck. Just think about that for a second. If you're going to run 20 Ice Walls, you're going to run 20 Ice Walls. You want to run 80 Data Ravens, you're on 80 Data Ravens. You have to collect them first. You have to collect them. But think about that. That's yeah. nuts. You ready for this? This yep. is awesome. I'm going to play Running Interference. It's a double. It costs me two. And it says, make a run. During that run, the court must pay X credits in addition to the number to the normal cost to res each piece of ice where X is the res cost of that piece so of ice. So it's double on my ice to res it? Yeah. And the flavor text says, look, a distraction. <laughs> I'm running your deck. You got it. Let me take a peek. This art is killer. Is it an agenda? No. Good. Okay, got your running interference right here, buddy. Buddy? Not your buddy, pal. All right. Five, six, seven. Come get some of this hand. Let's play Access Through Alpha. Whoa. It costs nine. What are you doing? It's a resource. Weird, so. And it has, if I pay one, I get base link and nine. Right. And in the, in the old Netrunner, I can only pump a trace up to its trace value. And yeah. I can only trace if I have trace base link value in So play. basically you pay one and get past any trace. I, can I pay one and pay, get past nine. Yeah. You'll see why I did this in a second when you draw your next card. Uh, last click, I'll just uh, draw, uh, get a credit. And it's your turn. You're using strategy. Ooh. You got that Cinderella. Hello. Rella, Rella. OK. Let's do. I'm going to install here and upgrade, or whatever would go here. So you can, it is an upgrade, yeah. So you can basically upgrade a server, uh, and then you can res it pretty much any time. Same with this like uh, campaign that you, you had. I'm going to install here, and then I'm going to click for two credits off of my BBS Whispering campaign. Get some money, get some money, get some money. All right, mine? Yeah. First click, let's play a body weight synthetic blood. Body weight in TM. Cost me two. The you prep. Just get some synthetic blood. It says draw five cards. Oh my gosh. Come on. Getting caught up. <laughs> Net runner. Ooh, I like that card. That is, uh, what was that shaper card that was zero cost draw three? Diesel fuel? Diesel. Yeah. yeah. It's not called the same thing, but it's called not diesel fuel, but diesel. Did he even play? Isn't the drink called Embarrassing? Yeah. The fuel is called Diesel Fuel, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Hold on. And you nearly won that, that HAC tournament, you old dog. Wasn't that a reason? That was unreasonable. That was unreasonable. I remember Philip J. Zach Jake rolled in, the little... inexperienced swordsman, didn't know all of the things he should be worried about, and therefore was untouchable. Yes. <laughs> so, like, I played a lot of Nairon early on, and then I got distracted by X-Wing. Um, and Star Wars LCG, and then came back to a regional at some point and had Tim put together basically two running gun decks. And yeah. so it was just very aggressive. And part of Netrunner was like, if you understand the card pool, like, I don't know what these could be right now. Right. And when you're really good at it, you know what those might be. So you know how to avoid it. But I didn't know anything. So I was <laughs> unafraid. Uh, and all, all corps are planning on you knowing that this is too risky for you to do. So you would never do it. Classic so game you theory. Can, yeah, and then yeah. there it goes. It was a good time. But I remember I came out of the top eight room after winning that first game against whoever the one seed was. Mm -hmm. They ended up winning the tournament. Was it Sam or no. Mason? What's his name? Pacer? It's his friend. Um, Had the beard. Yeah. I, can't, I yep. can't think of the name. Hold on. Somebody in chat will know. Pacer. Um, they came from, uh, what was it, Tennessee? Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta. I remember that distinctly. So but like, it's also like I had nothing on the line. Like I didn't care if I lost. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's also dangerous. That's also very dangerous. But I came yeah. out after I won that first game at Top 8 room, Philip JQ was there, one of the great locals. And he was like, oh, you know, Top he's like, I'm Zach. Uh, top 8. I guess I'll try that. <laughs> and like, he was like, really wanted to get Top 8 for the play mat you could get or something. Yeah. And I just started dying laughing. <clears throat> Anyways. um, You probably could have won that game you lost, too. I just didn't know how to win it. Yeah. <laughs> after, after I lost. That can be a problem. <laughs> after I lost and got knocked out, Tim was talking to me and he was like, you know, you just need to do this, this, and this. I was like, oh, man. Because <laughs> there were currents. I hadn't played with currents. Yeah. And I did, there was that one really, yeah. really bad NDN situation. I, I, could, I didn't know how to get around it. I don't remember what it was. 
Man, look at Aaron H. Aaron H is about to have his mind blown. Of the throwbacks y'all have done, I would love to see a revival of 7th C, Battletech, and Mythos, personally. All of those are the ones that I would love to see a revive, too. We did all of those throwbacks, and they are all fantastic games. Yeah, some of those might actually get featured again. As an example, I bought a decent number of 7th C singles uh, to make the the Crimson... Uh... The Crimson Dawn? No, no, Crimson Pirates? Crimson was the Wave? Pirates. Crimson and sea? then the Sea Dogs? Yeah, the Sea Dogs. I, I got cards to make both of those reasonable. Good, 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 good. Anyways. Um, I heard that the Pine Box people were going to do... Uh... They're doing something in the universe of 7th Sea. Okay. Let's bring them back. Get in touch with us. Who's, who's, who has the rights to that? AEG? Let's go. You have 10 money? Give us a shout. We'll PDP that thing. P D P D P. So mm. if I pay six on this piece of ice, that means it starts at zero and I have to pay six to make it a six? Yeah. I can only go up to its trace value. You can go up to six, yeah. But otherwise it starts at zero? Yeah. That's garbage. They reworked that. Absolute garbage can right there. Correct. A garbage can. Uh, let's gain three money. And I have more than my hand size, so I have to get rid of a card, which I will. The Hunt Club. Necessary draw. First and second action, corporate shuffle. Draw five, shuffle a card stored in HQ into R&D. There. If you draw five and shuffle a card back in, that's really good. Woo, that's really good. Okay. Don't want that. Don't need that right now. Could use this. I like how the, uh, on our screen at least, the black border cards seem to disappear into the... The template. Okay. I will shuffle these back in. And then I will trash one because I'm over my hand size. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see what the future holds, Chris. He's saying he's excited to see in what other games Covenant might resurrect with PDP. Seems like a solution publishers need to take the plunge and offer support. Hopefully. Okay, so that was first and second action. I have one in the trash. It's face down. You don't know what that is. I'm going to come get it. <clears throat> and then... You got upgrades on two of your servers? Yeah. Would you describe your deck as the kind of deck that's trying to kill me? Um, no. And then I'll install here. Getting built. Okay. Fine. Yes, it was Ahmed. Chris. Yep, it's Ahmed. That's yeah. exactly him. All right, let's... Ahmed was incredibly good at this game. Uh, gain a credit, play a pile driver. So this is an icebreaker. A few things. It says uh, three credits you'll see on the card text. Break up to four wall subroutines on a single piece of ice. Interesting. So if I approach a wall, I can pay three to break three, but I have to I have to be at its strength. And you can see this has seven strength, but uh, it costs me one. I can spend one to give it another strength as many times as I want to. But it says whenever you use Pile Driver to break wall subroutines, lose a total of three credits from stealth cards. Whoa. Do you have to do that? I think I have to do that. Yeah. So you got to find stealth cards now. Yes. It doesn't seem stealthy. Or is it saying if you're using Pile Driver, you can't use any other stealth cards basically because it drains them because you're so loud? That's the way I would read it. I don't know. Maybe someone in chat will clarify in a second. That's not what I'm doing this turn anyway. I'm playing Broker. Cost me three. And then, like that. And then you'll see on Broker, he's got those little like inner key looking things from a computer keyboard. I can do one of these around. I can either put three credits on him or I can take all the credits off of him. The voice. So I'll use a credit and load him up. He's the old uh, Katie Jones from New Netrunner. I think it looks like Peter's agreeing. So yeah, so it's like. You can use Pile Driver, but like there's probably really good cards that do stealth credits. It just means you can't use them because you're too loud. I like it. You're just drilling. I'm a, I'm a pile driving. We were drilling. Like the Undertaker. And you start at seven strength, so basically all walls need not apply at this point. That's what we're looking at. Mandatory draw. We were swinging. Okay. Do you have one turn or do you not? That's really the question we're asking ourselves now. Um, 
Derek says, I, I literally became a cybersecurity professional because of this game. That's awesome. I'm going to ditch two to gain four off of BBS Whisper campaign. And then I'm going to install here. Overriding that piece of ice. Yeah. Okay, okay. Mine? Mm-hmm. Mine. First things first, let's play Jack and Joe. Zero cost prep. Draw three cards. Woo! 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. On Jack and Joe? Jack and Joe. There's too much blood in my caffeine system. I'll gain three. I'll gain two credits, and I'll click to put three here. We were building. You can't lose when you never run. This is excellent. It's so I, good. I was actually looking before we streamed, because we have a history of streaming old games, and then they disappear on eBay. Mm. So I was like, I'm just going to see if I can find some. No, there's no Netrunner CCG ever in it at all, unless you want to pay a whole lot of money. Install for one. Got to pay an extra credit every time I go up on the uh, further rung of the server. Yep. Um, install. Mm. Advance. Uh oh. Hello there. Well, hello there. We got us. We got an agenda on the table, unless it's a trap. It's not a trap. Could it be a trap? He even doesn't play traps. Zach knows I play by the books. It's, it's un, unreal how by the books. <laughs> so if I click for money, what do we got? Nisei's up to zombie. Nisei's Nisei's proud to announce uh, the upcoming release of our Learn to Play set, System Gateway, coming in December 2020. Fantastic. Everybody who's interested in, e in uh, Netrunner, check, check that out. Look up Nisei Project, Netrunner, get involved. It's great. So when you install the extra, it goes on the outside, right? Yes, this is the newest piece of ice, yeah. Also known as not the wall. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Is Broker just Katie Jones? Yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Ludo. Don't tell Zach. What's up, Rob? Saying hey. Uh, Herman, yeah, Nuse does hold uh, live tournaments for sure. Um, that, that scene is thriving. It was thriving, obviously, before the pandemic stuff. So I imagine uh, eventually things get back there. I need one spare click. I need a spare click. Money, install, install, run. Come on, man. It's right in front of you. This is a big part of Netrunner, too, in case you think it's insufferable. You just got to get in the other person's head. That's really the key. It's true. All right. Let's click. Clear. Oh, come on. Only six? That's a weak Katie. You gotta get at least nine, maybe twelve. Sometimes you need to go. <laughs> to go. When you gotta go, you gotta go. Let's do this. <clears throat> Three clicks left. I think this is the most efficient use of clicks. Let's play networking for mm. three. And then gain nine. Woo! That cost me two clicks. Then we're going to play an inside job. Hello. Here, I skipped the first piece of ice. That's... Oh, wait. I just took your money. You had 12? <laughs> that seems right. I think I took a five and a one. That's really how you get in my head there. Okay. People act like I don't know how to play the game on chat. Um, this is your last click? Yeah. Your final click? Yeah. Okay. Um, won't res. 
Okay. Keep going. Well, you, I skipped that piece. Well, you skipped the first piece that's res, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Won't res. Okay. So I'm going to get an upgrade to the face. I'm going to res this upgrade. Bizarre encryption scheme. It says, upgrade, runner does not score any agenda or agendas on a run during which it's accessed. Return that agenda to the fort instead. The runner scores that agenda at the start of his or her next turn if neither the runner or the corp has scored it by then. So basically, I get a free turn. All right, I'll trash it. Would you like to access this card? It's a Tyco extension. Four for four. Hmm. We're apparently. on the verge of greatness. <laughs> yeah, and apparently this was uh, crazy. This is banned. Four for four was just like outright. Banned. Yeah, it seems it's like, good. Yeah, it's too good. It's too good. All right, go ahead and get half your points. Plus, we need to get to seven. All right, so one, two, three. I'm just actually going to cash in a five for two. Advance this three times. Score a Tyco extension. I am at four points. Who's laughing now? Call your mama. Mine? Over to you. Yeah. Let's uh, play a Matador. It's a Century Breaker. No. Quit building that rig, please. Yeah. Uh, first click. Second click will run here. Where? Back. <clears throat> yeah. I'm going to pay five to res Ice Pick Willy. It's a sentry. You can break. It's just going to be expensive. Uh, it will trash a program, and in the run, it's a one-strength sentry. And you can uh, let it fire, or you can break it. Up to you. I'll pay five. So you basically pay three to get plus five strength. Yep. Pay one to break the first subroutine. Pay one to break the second you subroutine. You got it. All right. I will res another bizarre encryption scheme. Would you like to access it first or the top of the deck first? Deck. Well, hold on. Yeah, because you can use that even the turn I trash it. Yeah, yeah I'll take you deck first. I get it. Yeah. I will trash that. Mm. And I'll <laughs> trash that. Scheme. <laughs> it's so bizarre over here. I would put uh, I would yep. put nothing but those in my corp deck. I'd have ten of those. <laughs> uh broker. Clicking for three, and then I'll draw a card. All right, start of the turn, draw. First action, credit. Second action, accounts receivable, hedge fund. That's what that looks like. And then third action, install. How good is this game? It's so good. I love Netrunner. It hurts. Install here. Over to you. Come on. You have what? Nine credits? Nine nine sweet credits. Nine fat straw card. Gain two credits. Look for three. Mm-hmm. What are them build turns? Yeah. You know what? You love it. Okay. Let's do. Jeremy's saying, Bizarre Encryption is zero to res. <laughs> Nutty. Hopefully you don't got any more of them, but I can't count on that. First action, accounts receivable, hedge fund. Your stock's doing too good. <laughs> yeah, right. Second action, install for two. Create in the fourth. Third action, gain a credit. Over to you. Over to you. I'm waiting for you to. Oh, not gaining credit. Advance. Uh, Excuse me. Yeah, that's a pardon me. That's a pardon very me. different <laughs> different turn you got going on. Pardon there. me. Pardon me. Pardon me. <clears throat> you keep making me click these credits off of this thing before I want to. I've been around the block a few times. You have, Mr. Bun. All right, we'll clear it. Only my favorite game of all time. Click one. Click two, we'll play a score in game four. Sure gamble. Flavor text. If someone has consistently good luck, it ain't luck. That's right. 
Um, let's play Jack and Joe to draw three. Dang, you found your way to the money pit. And then I'm going to play run and interference here. Mm -hmm. Ice cost double. Let's go! <laughs> You can't you can't res them and also score. You know what I mean? No res. Uh huh. I'll keep going. I'm gonna res quandary for four. Well, now that's code gate in the run. Hmm. <laughs> well, a quandary just like we remember it, it used to be zero cost. Your turn. Okay. Mandatory draw. I'm going to go ahead and res this. It's an information laundering. It says you can advance it before and after you res it, and then you can take an action and trash it to gain four for each advancement counter on it. Nice. So I'm going to advance it two more times and then trash it mm -hmm. to gain 12. Okay. Not what I expected, but fine. <laughs> Over to you. Over to What's you. up, Tim? Indeed. Your bird's in the chat. I saw. What up? It's net running time. This is so, it's I, so good. Look how good it is. It's as good as ever because this game it's system so is the best thing that has ever been done by human beings when it comes to tabletop Okay, games. I was going to say, you're going to have to categorize <laughs> that probably. Polio vaccine, Netrunner. Uh... <laughs> no, but really, though. Polio vaccine. <laughs> it's not split hairs here. <clears throat> All right, Netrunner. Well, let's play a score, gain four. Let's Jack and Joe draw three. Huh. Um, I don't want to hit something that makes you trash something in my hand. I also want to run last click. I'm going to run your deck. Play and that cost me what? Then? Five? Cost you five, yeah. We'll break it. That's a great tax for me. Leave it. Uh, then I'll click and put three on broker. <laughs> oh, man. It's a zombie. Brain damage, brain damage in the run on a sentry for nine. It's pretty good. Cost you a uh, boatload. I see you, Cluster, saying, yeah, they mainly check YouTube. I'm seeing Twitch. It's rolling. We actually see you all equally. Uh, it's just honest. that there's more people commenting on YouTube. Okay. Ian, Ian's saying, is there a team coming to Discord? You know it. Let me get you a link. That's recent. That's a recent development. First action I'm going to draw, Zach. Second action, counts receivable. We have a classic game section on there to talk about old games. And then third action, install. Hmm. Could be, could be a three for three sitting over there. <laughs> you never know. You know, they did uh they did do I think one one two two three three four four five five if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. There's a piece of uh, icebreaker called Big Frackin' Gun. <laughs> it's very funny. Uh, let's play Hunt Club BBS. I get to uh, expose three installed cards. Let's start oh, with that. Look one. at you go. It's an, it's an information laundering. Yeah, let's look at what these two are. That is a ban pie or a bon pie, just a, essentially a rota turret for a zero strength, four cost sentry, trash a program in the run. Gotcha. So and I can just snap that one in half. This is a wall of ice, 13 strength or nine strength um, with a lot of net damage wow. and in the run. So that's a wall of thorns. I have to pay five to get through it. Yeah. It's not awful, but it costs 13. Yeah, you couldn't even res that when I hit the uh, double the res cost. Oh, not even. Nobody has 26 credits. Okay. This is in blue sun. All right, let's click one. Click two. Let's go ahead and check the top of your deck. 
Cost me cost you five? Yeah. Like a sieve over here. I'll trash it. Oh, six. Is that six strength, you said? Is that how they do it? Oh, it is six. Okay, it's just six strength. Yeah. I thought it was nine. You trash this? <laughs> More information lottery. Man, this deck can bluff like crazy with those. Yeah. Uh, I'll click to put three here. And then... I got a fresh card. Quick throw money. Mm -hmm. All right. Hmm. Brett says, if this game doesn't get resurrected in some form or another, someone is going to need to go before a jury of their peers. Totally agree with that. And that big, big one costs you three to use, like, no matter what, just to get through any wall, basically. Yeah, I can break up the four wall. It's a big one. First action is draw. <clears throat> Oh, you also drew. He's digging. He wants the point. He can taste the game. Game is here. Mm hmm. Cost you two there. Hmm. Let me do some quick math here just to take a look here, you know. Also, if they did a two for two, that's crazy. I don't think they ever did. did I, I did say that. But... Install advance advance for two. That's wild. Yeah. Smoochie so says, you boys like Mexico? I don't know why. <laughs> that's from uh, Super Troopers. Gecko, yeah. I'll post a link to the Discord again. OK, let's do. Um... Pay three. He's building a fort. And let's advance this twice. Hello there. So this is it. Unless it's another one of those. You know what this is. It's the one you already saw. Information laundering. Oh, nice. I thought it was an agenda. I would love to let you keep thinking that, but it's not a memory game. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, let's uh, money, 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 and then run your deck. Is it information? No, you can you can keep it. And I'll click put three on my broker. Mm hmm. Hmm. The, the efficiency, efficiency experts. experts huh? <clears throat> I felt like you. What you really wanted to draw right now was a little more money. That's what I need. Yeah, yeah. You said you weren't playing blue sun, but I'm not believing you anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and just res this to keep it clean. I know that I can do that anytime. So first action, I'm gonna advance. Second action, I'm gonna trash for twelve. That seems efficient. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty good. He never needed money again. And then last action, install. There it is. Is that a three for three? Did they do it? I mean, I don't know. Did they do it? Uh, Jason says corporate war is a three for three. I definitely have seen that in some decks that we have here in front of us at some point. I can't remember which one it was exactly, but definitely have seen it. There it is on the screen. You remember that card? It's the one where you lose all your money if you're under 12, but you gain a bunch of money if you're over 12 when you score it. Mm. So for somebody with 23... Well, you'd win if you get a 3 for 3. Yeah. So the money doesn't matter at that point. You're right. But just to dunk on you, 28 credits, getting an extra 12 would be pretty significant. Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't believe you.
Let's get my money. Mmm. Leave something. Put on your deck. You don't have medium or anything in there, do you? Mm-mm. Stays. And then... Do any agendas in this thing? I know. <laughs> Let's gain two credits. Go ahead. Advance three times. Score a corporate downsizing. Going to six points. When you score corporate downsizing, show the runner any number of agenda cards stored in HQ. Gain bits equal to twice the agenda points of these cards, then shuffle them into R&D. Tyco extension. Gain eight. Gain eight. Shuffle it in. <laughs> hmm. Now, multi-access, the hope is Could that you don't have that. it, because yeah. this deck has got to be sucked like a Christmas goose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping there's one agenda point uh, in here somewhere that's I get easy the to one. score, like yeah. a two for one that I can just knock out, but I don't know. Yeah. Because right. why would you put a two in? Like, four and two is not a Netrunner mindset, so there has to be a one. Unless they assume you're not going to actually get the four. Yeah, just assume you shuffle it in and get money with it. Yeah. It's possible. Um, okay, so first thing I'm going to do is check his act. Mm -hmm. Stay there. Beautiful. Second thing I'm going to do is click the broker. As you do. And then we'll draw. The third click draw, huh? Yeah, then we'll get a credit. Uh, I wanted to see what I was hitting in the deck first. First action draw. Second action draw. Third action. Install four. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, this guy. Mine? Mm-hmm. Play synthetic or body weight synthetic blood, draw five. You'll get caught up in the <laughs> That's a really funny card. What is it? Ooh. Ooh. I can't tell you. <laughs> mm hmm. Okay. Well, let's click my dealer. And then gain two credits. Mm, mandatory draw. First action draw. Second action draw. He's digging deep. Third action, install for four. It's going to come into your board just to make a point. Okay. And then <laughs> get it. This, one, two, three, four, five, six. And this. Mine? Mm hmm. It's about to go down, isn't it? Mm hmm. Um, we're, we're in the end game now. I'm gonna build a server into your into your deck here. Second. 
He's going to get all the way across the table. Yeah, all the way to me. You just need to find something to put in it. <laughs> that's that's something to do, yeah. Running interference wrecks this server. <laughs> uh, let's load the dealer. Broker? Yeah. And then game three. Mandatory draw. Setting up. First we're, action draw. We're in the end game now. Second action. Counts receivable. Gain four. Third action install. Are you going to kill me somehow with all your money? I hope not. That seems dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> you got to decide how dangerous it seems, you know? Have we another corporate downsizing? Let's think about this. Doing that Hail Mary. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, play a code cracker. I need to know what this one does. Break the code gates. So you just pay for strength and then zero to break. Yep. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to play a loan from Chiba. Oh, a classic card. Do I get 12? At the start of each of my turns, I either trash this or lose one. If I trash it, uh, I either have to pay 10 or lose the game. Yep. Um, so one. That was my first click. You play the code gate first. First second. I'm going to play restrictive zoning. What does that do? Uh, choose a data fort. Uh, the court must pay two extra in addition to the normal cost to oh install ice. I'm not going to do that. I thought it was a res ice. Uh, let's play score. No, not play score. Click here and gain nine. Yeah. And then run here. So that was one, mm -hmm. two, three. Run. Let's go. I haven't done the math. I just have a feeling. Start with laser wire, just a little tax there. Um, costs me four to res. One net damage and in the run. Uh, three to get through everything, I think. Three. That was easy. <clears throat> All right, zombie coming up. Four strength sentry. So three. Four, five, six. To break it or all. just take some brain damage. I'll pay six. This is our time. What do you got? 15? Yeah, ish. Mm hmm. You pay three to break everything on a wall, is that right? Mm hmm. Pile drive. All of them. Literally everything. Oh, four. Four. I've got four. That would be all of them. Uh, this is not as good as I thought. I kept thinking that was a nine. <laughs> the six. It's fine. Uh, quandary. I'm not going to res. Okay. Code gate, two strength. Two strength. So I'll pay two, break two. Mm -hmm. With my code cracker. Can't build a wall high enough, can we? <laughs> bon pie. Uh, zero strength, trash, and in the run. Sentry? Mm-hmm. So I'll go ahead and pay to break it. Mm-hmm. Access. No! It's break. I'll, I'll trash laundry. it. I'll trash <laughs> it. That's all right. I got you to spend a lot of money, and now I know, I know the score. It's a, known, it's a known quantity now. That's the way Netrunner's got to work. Meanwhile, I got this debt to pay. <laughs> From Chiba. I needed it too. I look. I, I would have been too short if I hadn't had the loan. It's true. The loan is key. To trash that one cost asset. 
But if it's anything you can score on three advancement, I have to get it. Yeah. We're on game point now. Install. Uh -oh. <laughs> Advance. And I'm going to install on the top of this. Four, four. Let me make sure that I'm, my math is right. That discard pile is looking pretty tasty. Oh, there's nothing over there. There's nothing over there. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, no, no. That's my last ditch effort. I haven't seen a single All right, thing. So over there. it would cost me three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, with what's known to get in. Plus this. Lose a credit. It's a bad loan. <laughs> it was a great loan. <laughs> it was a great loan. What do you, you think they're not going to have interest? Could just be some more information laundering. Could be. Wouldn't that be something? Spend all your money. All right, we're going to score in game four. It's handy. Can everybody at home? Can you guys follow along with this? Okay. Can you see it? I think it. I think it's. It looks pretty good. Yeah. We've kind of got it set up really nicely. Can you feel? Can you feel? Don't think it's enough. All right, let's gain a credit. Let's play restrictive net zoning and cost you two extra to res. Isn't that still the one that cost me an install? That's right. <laughs> back that up. I'm going to back up the credit game. Still doesn't work how I want it to. <laughs> you mean it's still written that way? <laughs> <clears throat> As the friendly corp, I will remind you that you can always take the net and brain damage. I know. That's what I'm looking at. <laughs> All right, let's go a different direction. Second click, I'm going to play MIT West Tier. Cost me three. Oh, no. Are you about to multi-access me? Shuffle your hand, trash, and stack together, and then draw five cards. Uh -huh. And then remove this from the game. Hmm. That's that brain net damage coming in. Hmm. Interesting. Like, interesting. Ah. A lot of good cards you could draw into here. Multi access would be one of them. Multi access, inside jobs. Ooh, actually, the card of all cards showed up. What card is it? Tell me what it is, just for the love of the game. You don't need to know. I'll tell you what it is, because I'll play it. Let's get another loan from Chiba. <laughs> oh, no. Busted. <laughs> We're running. Let's run it. Let's run it, Charlie. <laughs> we got Ice Pick Willie here. <laughs> Nothing fancy. Uh, He's going to have to pay some money. It's a one strength century. One strength century, the I worst like to... kind, which is funny. Yeah, kind of... I like to do it opposite. Yeah, just kind just of freak you out a little bit. I got it. Three, four, five to break it. Five. Keep going. You tell me the numbers. This is a ice wall. 
So I'll pay like three. Three. Break everything. Then zombie is a sentry. So I'll pay. Where am I? There it is. Three for three, string. four, five, six. Gets it. And I'll pay two. <laughs> then I'll pay two. You want to access? Yeah. Give me this four points, baby. You got oh, it. Oh, yeah. He gets on the board. But I, my dads are going to get heavy. <laughs> Your dads are going to get heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, install, advance, efficiency experts for three. We're in the end game now. Mm -hmm. I need a three. I got to find a three quickly. Okay. Let's gain a credit. Wait, lose two first, yeah? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's going to make this harder. Before I do anything. <laughs> I love the flavor of that card, though. It's so good. And if at any time you can't lose credits, you die, right? Yeah. Game's over. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming for your knees, man. <laughs> it's true. You're, you're riding high going to get that Tyco extension and then... Pay me. Pay him. Pay him. Pay him. Pay that man his money. Yeah, like if I end the turn on no money, I lose too. Are you bluffing me over there? You're not bluffing me. Like you're stacked. Only way to find, only one way to find out, right? I'll see if I can make it where you can't win. Good choice. I'm just waiting for that uh, wait, Maker's Eye. Or whatever the equivalent is yeah, in old school. I would like, I was also <laughs> waiting for it. All right, let's gain three credits. <laughs> He's scraping the barrel. <laughs> Here we go. And then I'm going to run your deck. I know you are. You have to. <laughs> uh... How about a two cost data wall? <laughs> Place there lovingly. I'll just face check it. <laughs> yeah. My turn, advance three, score it. Ah, it's Tycho, baby. What was on the top of your deck? A siren. Hmm. No agenda to speak of. In fact, I think it's just Tycho's and the three cost. There's one. There's another. Yeah, so you just load it with Tycos because you have four fours that, that totally lower your um, whatever you call that. What do you call that? Your, the agendas in your deck versus oh, the density? cards. Gen density, that's right, yeah. Boy, it plays the same, doesn't it? Sure does. With the exact same experience. Now I want to show you my corp deck. Yeah, let's take a look. I don't know what it does, but those you ones have from a deck are amazing. Or Good times. And I do think Tycho got banned or something, which would make a lot of sense. The numbers just don't add up. Anyone from Nisei watching, uh, don't make that card. Chiba. The loan, I think you could do. I think you could do it that way. Yeah. In game, some kind of a way. Game 10 on a... Do you want the Foundry Heart for HQ? Hey, you can, you can leave that open. Do you want yeah, that for HQ? All right. Is Matt on uh, YouTube? Tim's saying that. I don't know if that's... Uh... Yeah, oh, Matt, yeah. Matt, what's up, Matt? Hey, thank you so much for letting us use these decks. Matt said, uh, meant to get a Tyco and then Red Herring for the win. Ah, I love... I hope Red Herring is still the same. Ike, there's not a legal issue with us playing these on stream. There's a legal issue with us printing and selling cards. Yeah, printing and selling those cards. And to be fair, it's a legal issue that I don't know that anybody really knows how it would go if it really got pressed. But some case, sometime is going to set precedent, and I don't necessarily want to be on be either case. side of that versus yeah. symbol. So and so versus so and so. Just well, a huge welcome to everybody, uh, Netrunner far and wide, CCG players, Android players, Nisei players. Um, 
Great to have everybody here. It's all a love of this exact thing. I mean, it's the same thing we love. It's like just hide agendas, try to find them. It's a simple idea, but it's so addicting. It's crazy. All right, so I'm gonna do, this is my HQ, this is my R&D, and this is my, uh, yeah. What you mean? Because oh, I have wait, a camera. Do you do it backwards? I oh, do yeah, do it backwards, but it helps because yeah. of a camera. It's like I knew instinctively. Actually, yeah, instinctively. One day. And we normally do this, right? And that's what people did. Uh, yeah, some people did that. We don't talk about those people. Draw five, eh? <clears throat> Ooh, this is kind of like a criminal deck already. Mm-hmm. Cool. 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 Nice. Very cool. Hey, these are great. All of these cards are so awesome. So, oh my gosh. Ah! All right. You ready? Yeah. Mando draw. I'm going to put my deck over here like a normal person. Oh, I used, that's right. I used to have my ID here. All right, let's do this. Install. 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 Oh, really? <laughs> One of those games, huh? Um, first action, let's, let's check out HQ. This one? Yeah. This here? That one. Do I really care? Medium way. All right, it's for four. Ends the run. Okay. Second action, I'll pay Wilson, Weefel Runner Apprentice. And he says, this is a hilarious card. Matt says, I'm laughing my A off at some of these plays. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, so you get a free action every turn, but you can only use it to make a run, and during that run you can only spend three credits, three or less. So that's my second action, so I'm going to spend my free action to take the run over here. Axel? Yeah. Looks good. I put it in my deck, it's good. Third action, let's go here. Fourth action, let's go there. You want access? Yes. You access a brain dance campaign. Crash cost of seven. <laughs> this is like classic, like, <laughs> this is like a Bla original Blade Runner yeah. style. Like, yeah. this is what an ad that someone would do. Put 12 from the bank on it, res it, take two from it, and then, yeah, okay, makes sense. Adonis campaign. You style. can trash it for seven. I don't have seven, nor do I want to trash it for seven. <laughs> uh, over to you. <laughs> Draw to the guy. Hey, yeah, you've seen that card. Um, uh, Ginga, is that right? Asking, do we still make? Yeah, we still make these tokens. We got on our website. You can find the data tokens on our uh, components category. We do a run whenever the waitlist builds to a, a big enough number. So if you want, if you want to set, get on the waitlist, and then you'll get an email when they get printed. Uh, click for three. Okay. What's my uh, corp ability? None. That was the best thing. I think Matt was saying the best thing with the ID is that they added. Which I agree. Uh, first action, use the free run to go to R&D. Not res. You want to access? Yeah. Looks good. Uh, second action, or first real action, credit. Uh... Second action, broker. Third action, load broker. Seen that before. Yeah. And then fourth action, play a fall guy. Can avoid receiving a tag. It's like you know the, the deck that I have. I think they were paired against each other. Makes sense. Because the, the original two were in the same box, and these were in the same boxes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you're probably going to try to tag and, and wreck me. Yeah, go ahead. 
I don't know why you'd say that. Well, all I've seen is uh, efficiency operations and some walls. So. We're going to play some efficiency experts. Mm -hmm. And then I will gain two. When you're playing Corv, you just take it easy. Just take it easy, man. Would you just take it easy? You said it, man. Um, first action, if you want it done right, look at the top five. Take one and rearrange the rest. Three, four, five. Mm. Are you kidding me? My gosh. Okay, let me take a look. Ski here. Okay. Uh, then we'll do this. I'm going to take this into my hand. Then we'll do this, this. This, this. Okay, I got you. Okay, done. Uh, second action, draw. You might expect. Classic. It's the classic move. Third action, credit. Last action, broker. Tired of my turn. I'm going to res the brain dance. Mm hmm. And then I put 12 on it, so I'm just going to put uh, six counters on it. You get one immediately, yeah? I get one immediately, yeah. Assuming it works the same. And then I have to draw. And then I will install, install, mm -hmm. and a credit. Really? Come and get it. You stopped checking that deck, the turn of the agenda showed up. Dang it. <laughs> or maybe I'm just joking with you. Or maybe I want you to score. You ever think of that? I did. You probably have net damage. You just probably have net damage. First action, let's run R&D. This, this year? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'll let you take a peek. Mm -hmm. I'm going to score that. Ooh, corporate war, three points. Get out of here. I'll take a free action check, R&D. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's cool. 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 Second action, we're going to get a loan from Chiba. You know it. You did it so well. Mm, you're Chiba in? Mm -hmm. Chiba's all over the place. Third action, we're going to play a dwarf. Barrier breaker, wall breaker, really. Uh, uh, last action, run here. Boris. Access. Oh, baby. Oh, baby, baby. Look at what I found. Mine? <laughs> Yours. Can too. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, watch out. It's a clinic. Okay, let's <laughs> install for one. We'll see. <laughs> uh, 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 we shall see. Install, advance. Raising the stakes, huh? <laughs> Start of my turn. One credit gone. You got them debts. Now I just got to wait you out. Yeah. First action. I'm going to use Wilson to take a free look at R&D. Unless you res. 
I'm going to score that. <laughs> okay. First real action. Let's take a run on R&D. That's good. Second is draw. Third is draw. Last is broker. Mine? Yep. I'll advance. Oh, I gain two. Then I'll advance three times. Nice. Nice. I'll score a corporate retreat. It has an ability to click gain two. I lose it as soon as I raz or install a card. That's so, such an awesome card. You get magnum opus until you res or install. That's so good. Okay, over to me. Let's take a free run courtesy of Wilson over there at R&D. Stays. I knew that to happen. <laughs> yeah. I, I could res, but like, I just need that to work. Second action. I need to lose one. Yeah. The loan. <laughs> PMK says, well, I have good news and bad news. The good news is I managed to replace the broken valve on my coffee machine. The bad news is it now sounds like an old car with a broken transmission. <laughs> That's funny. But you have coffee. Kaya, good yeah. Kaya. A second, uh, first real action, I'll say. Um, I'm going to run HQ. It's going to cost me one with the dwarf. It's a 50-50 shot there. 50 50 shot at either card, yeah. <laughs> What's the it's name of it? Olivia Salazar. For half cost, run it down, res a piece of ice installed on this fort, de res it at the end of the run, use it once. That's awesome. I'll trash it. That's got to be that sentry, right? How did he know? Whoa. <laughs> Second is draw. Dude. Third is draw. Noise. And last is broker. Mine? Mm hmm. Campaign's paying off. Yeah, it, it, it was allowed to just roll. <clears throat> All right. Uh, gain two, gain two. Mm. Creep can roll, dude. Creep can roll, man. Gain two. Oof. Lose one. <laughs> Damn. What's over there in R&D, you think? You think that's a big piece of ice that you just have been trying to scare me with? Or you think it's a worthless piece of ice uh, because a dwarf, so now you're just never going to res it? What do you think? I think it's one of those two. <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell you which. Hmm. Well, um, first action, we're going to take Broker. Damn. He's paying off your loan. Yeah, I think that's gonna happen. I don't I don't do this whole rest of the game lose money thing. Uh, second action, we're gonna play Mantis Fixer at large. Search your stack for a card and get it. Any card. <laughs> you at least have to score an agenda <laughs> to trigger that. Pardon me, it will be a second. I have to go find any card. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you gotta go right through your whole deck now. Uh, Why don't you just randomize it and draw one? Well, that's not as good. What up, James? Appreciate the comment. Okay, so this is an efficiency deck. Oh, this is a real, a real deck. That's possibly good. These are all the same cards, man. It's all the same cards. 
I will say the LCG did less work than I thought it did yeah. in changing things. Yeah. The art was awesome. And, and I, I like this too. There's a classicness to all this art that's just bizarro. I like that. So that's what. I, I remember how to do this math. So six actions, seven actions, eight. Brett um, says, put some tea on while Steven learns his cards. Yeah, right. That's exactly right. Okay, hey, this is a classic. Just to understand, this is a classic uh, runner deck. It's all breakers and then multi-access. <laughs> Don't worry about it too much, though. Multi-access, what? Access card instead of it is one that gives you attack. Oh, my. That's it. That's the one I need. I'm just going to take that one because this is a stream. It is a stream. Hmm? Okay. How about some of this? What clip was that? Third action. So I, I took Broker. I played Search My Deck for some stuff. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm going to pay one for Edited Shipping Manifests. Prep Sabotage. <laughs> Matt says, Shipping Manifest, I wonder? Question mark before he knew what you pulled. Make a run on HQ. If it's successful and the Corp has any bits when you would access HQ, do not access cards. Instead, the Corp loses one. You take a tag and you gain 10. It's a much more fair account siphon. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to pay one to break the crystal wall. I lose one. You lose one. I take a tag, but I'm going to fall guy. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to gain 10. That was third click. Yeah. Okay. And then last click, I'm going to play... Nope, I'm not going to play that. I think I'm going to play the good the good one. Oh, this is Yogg. Three strength, zero to break a code gate. Very cool. Do you know the Muffin Man? Last, I'm going to play four for the Cypher Master. It's basic code gate breaker. Two for uh, breaking, one for strength, starts at five. And over to you. Oh, wait, end of my turn. Uh, you may trash the retriever at the end of any of your turns. I'm going to trash it and pay 10. It's gone. Nice. Didn't need that loan after all. All right, gain two from my brain dance campaign. There it is. Um, let's click for two, because I still haven't installed the rest. Then I'm going to bust it. So I lose that ability. Um, I'm going to pay two and install. No way that's worth four, right? There's no way. <laughs> right? There's no way. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Okay, over to me. You paid off your debts. That's really impressive. First, uh, free run on R&D. Measure some For things. the ball game. For all the tuna. He needs one point, ladies and gentlemen. Can he find it in R&D? Will Zach try to keep him out? I can only spend three credits on the run, if that matters. Pay five. It's going to cost you two. Hmm. You don't got that much money. I don't got that much money. Pay him. All right, that's done. Check. First real action. Gideon's Pawn Shop. Oh, yes. I love that card. In Search that your trash for a card and put it in your hand. Shipping manifest. Goodness. Second action. Use the shipping manifest. Pay one to break. Uh, you lose one. I gain 10. I take a tag, but I can avoid a tag with this guy. So he's gone. Oh, you're really going for it now. We're in the end game now. Third action.
mean, I'll take a look, right? What's the worst that can happen? Trash? You don't have a century breaker on it. Right? I don't. No, you're right. You're, the, right. you're right. The worst type of hit. But, you know. I don't think you're going to. I don't think that's even close to an agenda. Am I baiting you? Third action, I'm going to take a look at HQ. Here? Yep. You pay? Cost me one, yeah. <laughs> Rock is strong. Rock is strong. Ice wall in the run. Okay, so you're doing a big old wall glacier thing. And last one, broker. Yeah, my final two for my brain dance. Mm-hmm. Draw my mandatory card. Advance three times. Your turn. Oh, come on. You gotta know <laughs> when to hold them. Know when to fold them. <laughs> that's gotta be a trap, right? It's such a good trap if that's a trap. There's no way. Because that, that definitely makes it look like a four pointer, right? There's no way. A five four, just hanging out. It or has, it has to be a four pointer. Or, or a five pointer. Or it's a six damage card. Or a five pointer or a six pointer. I don't know. This is the wild west. Like a now. June bug. This is the wild west. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> we were flying high, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And we are hitting ground. <laughs> <laughs> Got to six early and now we're scared. Uh huh. Uh -huh. All right, first action, install Crash, Sentry Breaker, mm -hmm. but it's expensive. Second action, take three. Third action, run this thing. Woo! We're going for it. Okay, we're gonna res a Ben Pie. Ben Pie. Ben Pie. Mm-hmm. Mm. So zero strength. I'm gonna pay four. Rainbow. Let's keep going. Quandary. Pay two. How many money you got left? I have seven money left. Okay. I'm asking for any reason. <laughs> More risk. Now hold on just a second. You got one. You got one credit. You, you couldn't even. Well, you might be able to score it again. This was safer than HQ. Could be that Tyco business. What else have I seen here? If this is a take one damage for every investment counter on it, I'm it's dead as toast. Yes. Project Junebug style. Junebug was two for every token, right? Yeah, it was. It was real bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're trying to hold it together. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, you gotta you have to you have to take a look, don't you think? You probably you were probably saying if the only way this goes wrong is if he plays a sentry breaker cheap and then finds a way past this, and that's about the cheapest way I could possibly do it. So this is messing with your math. There was no way you thought vampire get you know, get in there, get rid of my co gate breaker, quandary stops me, you score game point, game over. But you also know that I cannot resist an agenda. Counters on it. Um. All right, dude. I'm gonna take a look. Let's access. Give me the give me the ch tuna. Ready? Yeah. Ah, it isn't a genius. You got yes. it. You. So I started with the three one in my hand. You had a lot of agenda. And then I drew an agenda. <laughs> and then I saw a bunch. And then <laughs> you, the turn you didn't check was another agenda. Mm-hmm. On and the you, top. And, the turn you didn't check. Oh no it was way! An agenda. And then like game over. Then I scored one finally. Uh, but that that this literally is. Are you trying to score? Are you trying to get me to steal him and then tag me? And I stuff? have no idea. I saw my agenda. <laughs> Let's see if you had a yeah. Okay, so you definitely got urban renewal. Do five meat damage. Yeah. How do we tag though? I. Uh... That's, that's probably the only aspect of Netrunner 
the flood. Is the flood. You, there's, there's such an easy way to fix that. Like, just even just fixing it in your opening hand, I think. Set your first five or whatever. Do ashes, style, whatever you want. Or, like, you can basically set any agendas aside, draw back up. Yeah, like an Arkham Mulligan. Basically, you, you get five non-agenda cards to start. Yeah. Because you have to Mando draw turn one. So yeah. I could have an agenda in hand from the beginning. No, yeah, I think that's that's such a simple that's such a simple way of doing it. Uh, oh, check this out: silver lining recovery protocol. That would have been great. You don't have any way to tag. Oh, there it is. Trojan horse is your is your uh, taggy. Mm -hmm. So you tag and you renewal and you nuke them. Yep. And then you have net damage around. And then, yeah, so it looks like that's really the idea. This is, these are just like, that's just a one uh, little mini combo in there. Yeah. Oh, man, what do you think? Let's zoom out for a second. This is strangely more like the LCG than I remembered it being. It's it's as good, right? I mean, it. I mean, they fixed the tracing weird. and like the unlimited number of cards. The IDs were a huge add in the LCG. Yeah. So if you're unfamiliar in the LCG, the corp was a specific corp and the runner was a specific runner. And uh, that they had like an ability and some basic stats and stuff, but that obviously let you kind of change the, the identity of your deck, which is, I think I gave up the game a lot more play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. Uh, asking, what was it? Uh, Clusterbox asking, how would you do it for the runner? Um, they don't have agendas in their deck. I don't think they have to. Yeah. They don't get a fancy mulligan. Although I would still say, so here's what I would say. I would say your mulligan is... Just like Arkham, um, you draw your opening five, you can set any number of those cards aside and replace them. At that point, basically the corp has to basically lay out all of their agendas, but you, it works in Arkham because you, you don't, it's not hidden information. Like your, your But hands... I mean, I think that's part of the cost of it though, right? So like, if you do a selective mulligan, mm -hmm. you can mulligan any number of cards. And then after your selective, and you discard, like you put them face down and you draw back up to five. Mm-hmm. And then it's like you have the option, if you want, you can reveal any number of agendas in your hand. Those go down, you draw again, mm -hmm. and whatever those are, they are. And that's it. But you, you just like really pad the stats against. Because the other thing you could do is just do choose your first five. Yep. But, and, and the weird thing about choosing your first five cards, so Ashes does this, and it actually works very well for Ashes, um, but the game is kind of built around the concept that you can start out with very specific things. It opens up deck building to a remarkable degree whenever you get to choose your first five cards because you could literally have five one ofs and this is just what I start with. So that's dangerous, particularly dangerous um, because it can lead to some degenerate situations where like you put the five cards that have to work exactly together to make this crazy thing happen. Yeah. But the response to that is if it's possible, if you designed a game and designed cards in a way that if five of them get together in a certain way, it's game breaking, you've already failed. Yeah, I so agree with that. Rather than it happening randomly, it's happening on purpose. That doesn't make it any less bad. Yeah. So I don't know, just keep it, keep it simple, keep it clean, uh, and then you draw your, yeah. your first I mean, one. The thing about first five, though, what it does is it, it means there's cards. I picture in Netrunner specifically cards like Katie Jones, or in this case, the Broker. You only run one of it. Yeah. You get to start it in the game. And so, like, I assume most runners would start with an icebreaker of every type that they wanted. Right. An economy card. That would change. And so then, like, that's a very different... That's a different game. ...environment. Yeah, that's a very um, different game. Because part of this game is the fact that early on you have time. You can always click to draw. And so, like, you need to run some cards that draw cards that speed that up when you need it. And, like... Yeah, it doesn't work. But it didn't work for Netrunner. Even in this case, though, I started me. I started the game with only one agenda in hand. But then my first card I drew was an agenda. Mm -hmm. The first card he ran was an agenda. The next card I drew was not an agenda. And the next card he ran was an agenda. The next card I drew after that was an agenda. Maybe that's why nobody has... Maybe that's why it has not changed. Because it's like, when you start talking about solutions, none of them really solve the problem, and they all seem to take away from one of the great things about Netrunner, which is... Even from the very first turn, you could have a five-card agenda hand, and I have no idea. And you know, there's something interesting about that. You know what I think the maybe fixes? What's that? Now we're, get, now we're getting into some serious jazz. But another way of fixing it would be, and this might be extreme, but 
you only have one point agendas. Oof. You have a lot more agendas. Oof. But it would, it would statistically, the odds of you hitting seven agendas in a row off the right, top of my deck. Right, right, right. Part of the problem right now is that you randomly hit a four. Mm -hmm. Or a, even a three. But you need to have the push your... Essentially, you're dealing with a push your luck mechanic in deck building, which says I can run hefty agendas and the R&D risk or the HQ risk is just way higher. But the payoff is way bigger if I score them. But, you know, it's, it's, inter it's kind of... It is one of these games we've seen a lot of these throwbacks uh, where when you start tinkering around the edges, the entire thing falls apart. It's like all the mechanics are so weirdly interconnected yeah. that like you actually have to just leave it alone for it to be as good as it is. It's tough. Maybe, but I, I will say any every game should have a selected mulligan, period. Look at your first five, set aside any you don't want, redraw, shuffle it, shuffle the ones that you There's set no, aside back There's no reason, in. right? There's no reason to give yourself a bad hand starting it's, out. Especially the worst kind of mulligan, it's one thing when it's like, toss your cards back, you don't want it, it shuffles in and you draw, and you might draw them again. Mm -hmm. That's medium. Worst is when you have to, in Netrunner, it was your whole hand. Your whole hand, yeah. And then you get just random hand again. Yeah, yeah. So that's ultimately why I kept my hand, because I had one one-point agenda, and I was like, that's not bad. Of course. And then I drew a two-point agenda, and it's like, eh. And then you scored a three-point agenda, and it's like, this is bad. Yeah, 100%. This is so funny. So uh, this coda here on YouTube, Marvel Champions is so confusing compared to Netrunner. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that amazing to see the the difference in just like what people find hard, advanced, easy, I mean, complex, et cetera? What I will say is that the Netrunner rule set is way simpler. Yes. But ultimately, true, like, yeah. I could explain Netrunner across like a page or two. You don't have to define you. <laughs> or or you just a, appropriately define it from the beginning. Uh, but the other thing is that I feel like um, understanding how to play Netrunner, not that crazy. Understanding how to be good at Netrunner, way harder than champions to me. Yeah. Like, yeah, it is. It's people figuring idea. out how to operate these machines, and there's two different versions. Like, because you got to play two games. Yeah. Understand how to run versus corp is a very different skill set. Yeah, that's 100% right. Um, do you want to play this corp, that runner, uh, et cetera? Do you want a shot at redemption here, one final game? I'll, I'll play the same deck. We got time? I, I want to play the deck I just got flooded with. Same deck? Yeah. You want to do the you same can, deck you can play, here? Or? You can play either runner you want. Um, I'll play the runner I haven't played, which is the one that you started with. We'll see what that one's all about. That'll be fun. All right, let's do one more. Let's go to the table here. And that's another upside of this game. So, like, agenda flooding doesn't happen often enough that it makes you not want to play. So, like, in a tournament setting, when you're playing Corp and Runner during each round, or you're playing five rounds, like, you might get agenda flooded one game. Sure. That's actually goes to the other one. Oh, right. Um, so that helps, too. Like, it, it's really a matter of how often it happens, because people were talking about mana screw and magic. The difference with that is that when that happens in Magic, you can't do what your deck is designed to do at all. This you just simply can't pay the this cost. This changes the tempo of the entire game. And sometimes you just lose, and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Yeah, I think Lavin calling it the unique deck version of Netrunner. Yeah. Which would actually be awesome. I mean, if I if I just had a, a set, here's a runner, a runner deck, it has a random assortment of like the right number of icebreakers for the different types. And then past that, it's like, see what happens. It's like, I would love the like the sealed Netrunner experience where I just yeah. crack this deck and be like, well, let's see if I can make this work. Just figure it out. I do like that idea. So this is a really good example. But the deck building is amazing, so. I have a th two pieces of ice and a three and a two in my hand. I can't keep that hand. But with the current mulligan rules, you do this. We had ice, though. Just put it in front of HQ and call uh -huh. it good. Uh -huh. And hope you don't have the breaker. I never do. Okay. Here we go. Five. Five. It's happening. Okay. 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 These are all great cards. Ready to go? Yeah. Mando draw. Uh, let's play efficiency experts for three. Classic opening. Beanstalk royalty is right there. And then let's play... Mm. There. 
and gain a credit. Mm-hmm. Is that a bad is that a bad card? Hmm. First action I'm gonna play uh Sure Gamble, also known as score. We both did the same thing. Well, would you look at that? Classic. An absolute classic. Get money. Get paid. Check this out. So I've got two barrier breakers. This is the big, big breaker. It costs money. This is for smaller ice. Way cheaper. Don't tell Zach, though. Um... Second action is run R&D. Don't want to rinse repeat last time. I just want to take a look. Just want to see what you're working on there. Mm -hmm. Your research and or development. All right, let me see. I won't rest. Okay. Score it. Classic. Third action, run R&D. He's leaking like a sieve. All right. Stays. Last action credit. Go ahead. Mandatory draw. Let's play Silver Lining Recovery Protocol. If any agendas were stolen during the runner's last turn, gain bits equal to three times the number of advancement Ooh. counters. Wait, advancement oh. counters on it? Yeah, it doesn't work. Ah. Uh. <laughs> That's why I let you score. Fool! That's a bummer. Um, <laughs> let's go one here. One does not simply let the runner score. And one here. And I have an action left, so I get a credit. He's walling up. First action, draw. Second action, Jack and Joe, draw three. Third action. Seriously? Wow. Third action, a junkyard BBS. I can spend an action and a credit to get the top card back into my hand from my trash. What? <laughs> oh my god, that's busted. <laughs> that was the deck I was playing? Ah, uh, third action, run here. HQ. That was in my deck? <laughs> it was in your deck the whole time. <laughs> uh, no, no S. Anything good in there? No. Except that one. She's gone. Olivia. Olive, Olive Salazar. Olive Salazar. Olivia Salazar. Olive. Would you like some olives? Olives. Can I get an Olive with my... Uh, what's that drink John always used to order? That's martini? It. No. Is it in a martini? Oh, yeah. Like, make a good drink and put something gross in it. <laughs> Whatever that is. What up, John? I hope you're listening. Ah, uh, yes. The you're not here. You're not well here for me to make fun of you. Awful drink. Nobody drinks those. They don't have a storied history at all. I don't drink them. Just an old-fashioned well, that's good kind enough of for me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> if I don't like them, the world can't, right? It's yours, by the way. Oh, okay. Okay. Hello there. Good morning, David Whitfield. It must be about four o'clock. One credit. Three o'clock. Gain two. Wow, look at old Ice Boy over here. We call this the uh, brick wall. Just laying bricks. First action draw. Second action. Let's run R and D. This this yes. here. This here. Bixby. Person Six. Yeah? Yeah, the right amount. I'll pay four. Res a neural blade. <laughs> Someone about to take some net damage. <laughs> so Sentry says do one net damage and you can't break subroutines on the next piece of ice. Oh, I'm going to be jacking out. Although you would have to res it. 
And I can't break them anyway, so I'll keep going. Ah! I have to get that with my junkyard. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep moving. You good? Ugh. It's fine. Third action. <clears throat> I don't know the break points. You know? You feel that way? <clears throat> this guy says they should have just named it Junkyard BS. Agreed. It's garbage. That's crazy. <laughs> ah, I just got to start getting stuff down. Third action, pay one for pile driver. Just to make you nervous. Uh, Not nervous. Last action, gaining a credit. Mando draw. Let's see what you didn't like. Oh, hello there. <laughs> Let's shuffle these up real quick. <laughs> Yeah. I hate it's so bad to trash gonna, that. Where's I'm gonna, Wizard, I'm man? Install Where's a Wizard? Card. Come on. Gain two. Nobody can pay seven to trash that. Never. It's crazy. Never. If you do, well, good good on you. First action draw. Second action less junkyard. A one. It is less efficient, Jason, but it is more specific. Someone says the B and big and BBS is for big, big BS. <laughs> Third action, let's play a Matador. Code gate breaker. Well, it's not Fire a code gate breaker. <laughs> Liar. Uh, last action, gain a credit. Mine? Yeah. Press that brain dance. Mm -hmm. Gain two back. Put five counters on it. Throw my Mando. Wow. Um. So it's like C three. Is that C three PO and Junkyard BBS? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Now, of course. Thank you. Um. Let's gain three credits. You're up. What up, Josh? They have been wild. First action is draw. Second action is draw. Third and fourth is networking. Pay three, gain nine. Pay three, gain nine. Gain two from my campaign here. And this big wig. Oh, I need to ditch one. Marketing types. Do we still have uh, only four memory? Yeah. Is that a thing? That's Is a there thing. an icon anywhere? Each, each program costs one, I think. Okay, well, that was not bad there. Yeah, it says right here, one mu. Oh, there it is. It's written right there on the card. Pile driver. It says mu. 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 Uh, mu. 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 I don't need it. I don't need expose. Expose is a waste of time. Crutch. Um, we're going to gain three. Okay, so HQ starts to look a little tastier, if you ask me. This here? This here, HQ? <laughs> Matt, happy to hear that. Take out a loan from Thanks Keeler. for letting me see this deck. Oh, he's going big. Big bank here. I always feel like when there's not much going on I'm, when I'm the runner... When I, I'm building stuff and I have money, I just need to make something happen. Yep. There's always agendas in R&D. There's always money in the banana stand. <laughs> That's right. Second action. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I, paying five to get past a Neuroblade is bad math. It's very bad. Second action, run HQ. You think that's bad math? <laughs> oh, look at this bolter cluster. Cost me seven. Oh, it must cost but me. But it does, uh, it's four strength, which is fun. That's three there. And then uh, it does four net damage, and you can't break something on the next thing. I see. So it's the same five. Yeah. Uh, keep going. Except for you gotta do it. <laughs> I won't risk. Let's take a look. Take a look. <laughs> you don't need to tell me. It's, it's a, a firewall. Fire wall. 
Third action, let's draw. <laughs> Matt Garrett saying, it took me so long to find all those Chiba loans back in the day. It was before eBay. I can imagine. That's crazy. Last action, precision bribery. Check this out. This is important. Read my lips. No new taxes. You ready? <laughs> All right, George. The corp cannot create any new data forts. The corp may trash precision bribery by paying one and paying four and taking an action. Okay. My turn. Otherwise, those the gin is just gonna marinate. Yeah, just hanging, <laughs> getting all saucy up in my hand. Uh, Alex with a very kind comment on YouTube saying, I'd consider moving to Oklahoma just so I could say TC is my FLGS. Well, that's amazing. Well, we can't quite be really right now. We're not open. You can pretend we're your FLGS. But though. we will be very soon. Gain two for my uh, Sundance campaign. I hate that. It makes me so upset that you get to get all that money. <laughs> I can't even explain it. Just living in it. Uh, let's install here. It's the same server. So You're we're not fine. making a new data for it, no. And then uh, let's make three. Okay. Make three. Or make two, sorry. <laughs> Are you making three? That's impressive. <laughs> oh, you got some nasty ice, man. I don't like it. Lose one. The Chiba. <clears throat> First action is draw. Second action is draw. If I take out another loan, I can pay off the first one. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I know this math. If I spend my money on this other credit card uh... <laughs> and I pay the bill here. <laughs> Third action. <laughs> you just got cash back from this one. <laughs> Can I consolidate? Will the Chiba, will the Chiba consolidate my loans, please? Can I consolidate Can I get my a credit card into my home 12 loans? Months. Interest rates are low right now. Last action, uh, gain a credit. One credit APR. <laughs> get right. a credit back. Gain two from the Sundance card. Festival. I like that Bryce is trying to pop up these cards and we say the wrong name every single time. He knows time. it's the Brain Dance campaign. <laughs> <laughs> You can hear the clicks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's pay one here and then gain two. I'm just getting ready for war, you know? Yeah, I need to be getting into R&D. All right, Sheba's got one. I need multi-access. Connor saying, I love the 80s, 90s style and all these cards. That's how I felt when I was playing. It's like, man, I would kill for an, uh, like a, what's that? Maker's Eye? Oh, yeah, Maker's Eye. When you had that one piece of ice over there on the deck. Second action, draw. Third action. Pay one for restrictive net zoning. So install ice is going to cost you additional. You might be in the same situation I was in where you're trying to build four or five out. That's not how I play. Um, last action, run R&D with an inside job. Did you skip that first piece? Yep. Okay. I'm going to... Res a rock is strong. It's a ice wall in the run. It's five strength. All right, I'll pay three. Looky Lou? Yeah. Cool. That stays. <laughs> Steven likes it. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> like, oh, that's the game we're playing. <laughs> I kind of see what we're trying to do here. So, like, I make it where it costs you a lot to make new things, new forts, and then if I could stick that first fort with a restrictive or multiple restrictive net zonings, then your remotes would get really problematic. Mm -hmm. Making me pay my corporate taxes? Mm -hmm. Must not be America. <laughs> yeah, that's right. What is this? Can I actually pay these things? <laughs> it's yours. Gain two for my Sundance campaign. Brain dance, you mean? Whew. 
Stinky card. <laughs> That's the card that, that you just saw. Five meat damage, right? What's that called? Meat damage, yeah. What's the, what's the card called? <laughs> meat damage. It's called meat damage, yeah. <laughs> Urban renewal. Urban renewal. That's right. Good humor there. Uh, Alex, question: Do we ship overseas? We do. We ship everything overseas. Yeah, worldwide. Connor and asking, do we build the deck? These are decks that we loaned uh, that our friend Matt Garrett, a local here in Tulsa, uh, had from the old days. So they they were you know they were reasonable, uh, real decks at the time that they were uh, retired at least. Uh, game three. Or they're probably the game was retired. I was guessing. All right, Chibi gets one. First action draw. Second action draw. You got to pay that loan. I already did. I know. I just like that you have to pay it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pay him. It's too expensive. The rent is too high. Third action. Let's take out another loan. All right. While we're here. Paying rent with a loan is bad. <laughs> And then the last action. I can't keep taking wild swings in R&D like this, but. Ah, uh, let's do it. It's inside job, that R&D. And then pay three. Was here? Mm-hmm. Okay. Pay three to break? Yeah, I did it all. Stays. Mine? Yeah. Game two. Brain dance clears. Get the card you were just looking at. Mm. What? That's crazy. Install? Mm hmm. Is that a good one? No. Nah. Um. What is it? Where's my parasite? Where's my data sucker? I'm not used to this expensive run stuff. Uh, gain too money. That that does not have the markings of an agenda. There's no advancement counter, so that might be your first clue. It's problematic. All right, Chiba. <laughs> Matt Garrett says if you're paying off the loans with that deck, the game's gone on <laughs> too long. Is it an agenda? No. They're all in your hand. First action draw. Second action draw. Third and fourth, let's running interference right there. Double your ice costs. Mm. Won't res. Keep going. Won't res. Keep going. Access? Yes. One oh, point. Oh, baby, I like the way you... What is that song? Oh, baby, I love you. I love the way you... Your way? I love your way? I don't know. <laughs> All right, and then... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no idea. <laughs> I'm bad at song lyrics. <laughs> All right, one off. Mine? Yeah. Wait, where did, oh wait, running interference would be here. Mm. And then I've got to get rid of corroder. No, I'll get rid of meat upgrade. All right, three points. Presumably there's four pointers. Didn't we see a four pointer? No, we didn't. This is one of those long game corp decks. 
going to play Silver Lining Recovery Protocol to gain three. There weren't any advancement cards. Oh, yeah, that's right. That. I keep thinking it's just school. Oh. <laughs> You've done this twice on both sides now. <laughs> the worst. Ah, uh, I get what I was trying to do because if yes. you score a point, I can get the money and then I can kill you. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's just kind of like a, you know, it's kind of a risk, lower risk kind of situation. Advance something. If they steal it, you get a bunch of money. If they don't, you score. Classic. Oh, I'm off screen. I'm back. Jason's saying that the O&R card designs followed a basic mechanical cost balancing, which I can feel. The ice, the ice feels a lot more taxing, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, it is probably because like parasite and, and ice removal and those kinds of things are less obvious. You have a lot less like efficiency mm -hmm. stuff. It looks great on the table though. All right, let's pay four here. Mm. Restricted net zone and doing some work. And then let's gain two. That feels good. Chiba. Rent's getting expensive. I don't think... Do You didn't see any multi-access in this deck. Not a single one. I don't know if it existed back then. Apparently there's the Maker's Eye style card. I'm going to take a look and just see if it's in there. I'll reshuffle. Okay. Okay. No. 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 No, 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 no. Okay, the answer is no. No. Multi-access. I access one card at a time the old-fashioned way. Right. God intended. The way the Lord intended. All right, so it's eight to get into R&D. That's bogus. That's my entire loan to take a look at one card, essentially. And you got to be able to pay your loans at the start of your yeah, turn. some garbage. But you only need four points, and you're out of here. Four points, and we're done. And I know that you're just sitting on them in your hand because there's no safe place to put them. Let's be honest, guys. You know it. I know it. Zorak knew it, too. Et cetera. <laughs> Lebowski knew it. <laughs> okay. Knew it. So... If mm -hmm. first action draw, I don't think I already did that, did I? First action draw. Second action. You got all these sentries. I always have hated sentries because they do the bad things. They're not good. They're not good at all. Maybe I just have to pay it. Connor asking, what happens if Steven can't pay his loan? We'll pull up the loan from Chiba again. It's actually, so you just, if it leaves play, pay 10 or lose the game. You may trash it at the end of any of your turns. When the loan to Chiba is installed, at the start of each of your turns, lose one. So I think it would just sit there. If you're at zero credits whenever you start the turn, nothing happens. I thought it left play if you couldn't pay for it. I thought so too, because I remember it working like that. Maybe they errated it. Because I, I do remember it was like, if you ever don't have the money, which would make sense, right? They like come and cap you, but maybe you. not. It's just a two, two tax forever. Um, second action. <laughs> uh, Matt says you can let it eat nothing. So you can be a zero money. Draw. Kaya saying, did Steven just swipe left on his entire deck? <laughs> no multi-access. <laughs> See you later. Yeah. Uh, third action. Let's take out another loan from Chiba. Oh, hey, my credit's good. Here we go. Last action. Let's run HQ. Third, Chiba? <laughs> Don't even think about it. Uh, plus five strength for my Matador. Breaking two center subroutines, so that cost me five. Moving on. Matador's cool art. Uh, let's go ahead and res a wall aesthetic. Cost me three. Here we go. One, five. 
Bon pie. Bon pie indeed. <laughs> Go for it. Draw a card because I, I got it. Some stuff here. Yeah. Install two money. What's that about? Never know. That can't be real. You remember that earlier when you saw systematic layoffs? You remember those? Three. <laughs> no. Let's pay five, put two advancement counters on something in a single click. Mm, yeah, you got a little fast advance there. Fire beware. First action draw. <laughs> Jason says, wow, three loans. <laughs> Second, you need that dealer, the broker. Second and second action loan from Chiba. Oh my Let's goodness, go. four loans. <laughs> Third and fourth running interference on that server. Double the ice res cost. Let's take a look. That's so good. <laughs> That's why my credit's so good. They know that I deliver. You're like the Lannisters. That's right. I never pay my debts, but I always get the agendas. I won't rest. Keep going. Won't rest. Keep running. Won't rest. Keep it going. Access? Yes. <laughs> this is the Department of Truth Enhancement. Cool. Trash it. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Yep. And that goes away, right? Yep. Over to you. I'm in a problematic spot at this point. Why is that? The four. I'm losing four every turn. Mm -hmm. That's mainly the reason. <laughs> I just got it. <laughs> Let this be a lesson in personal finance. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Where are your agendas, man? Are, you, I, are they in the deck? I don't know. Okay, it's because R&D cost me 7000 to get into. Who, who's it's a complete say, waste of time. You have to say, really? What are you doing over here with all this ice? I've got to find a better way to get past Neural Blade. This is crazy. <laughs> it's bothering me. Mm, I love it. All right. I'm going to install here. Then I'm going to res. It's called Rocker Boy Promotion. And it, a bunch I on put it? 15 on it. And then I can click to take three from it. So I have two clicks left. I'll take six off of it. Mm. Where are those agendas, man? All right, at least four. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the Chiba to bankrupt here. First action, draw. Second action, draw. Maybe you can find another loan and pay the loans for a couple Third things. action, Jack and Joe. <laughs> you know what I mean? I do. <laughs> I really do. You can pay one of them off right now. Nope. Last action, broker. Broker's actually the only way to get around being poor because of the loans. Yeah. Mine? Yeah. Uh, I've got to get rid of some stuff, too. Go two here. Hmm. And then I'll click here twice for you six. You signaling that there's no agendas in HQ? Is that what you're trying to do to me here? I don't Come know. On. Come on. It says protect the random deck because I don't have any agendas either. This must be crazy. This is Netrunner. Who's for? <laughs> Pay him. First action is draw. This game is great. Second and third is networking. Gain in six. Nice. Keep paying those loans for a minute. Last action is broker. Mine? That's right. <laughs> you just have to wait it out. Uh, I'll click these three. I will install over this. And I'll install an upgrade. 
That seems like it's an agenda. I'm on the clock here. Yes, you are. <laughs> These loans, man. Minus four a turn. I mean, part of it, too, is like what you can actually do to get rid of it is once you're at zero money, when he loads up, it's like mm -hmm. you get one turn, but you get to broker it out and then... And then just pay 40. And then just go. Well, then it'll go to... Like, if he has nine on him, you have a nine credit turn. Yeah. Every third turn. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Hunt Club... I want to expose the bottom two, and then probably one piece of ice, but we'll start there. Uh, that one, agenda. It is employee empowerment. Mm -hmm. Just draw a bunch of cards for three. Okay, let's see the other one. Tesseract, fort construction. All ice is an additional in the run unless the runner pays one. Wow, one for every piece of ice? That's annoying. Thank you. I'll take a look at this, too. What is it? Dark Knight. Dark Knight. It's clever. Trash program in the run, sentry. Okay, same second burst, same as the first, plus five. Break. So five. Five. Everything costs five. My kingdom for a five. Second is draw. Better use this money. Uh Third is credit. What is this? Uh, wait, hold on. We got to make sure. Three to break up to four. So that's three. Century is what? You can't break any of uh, that. Four. Cost me uh, three, four, five, six, seven. So rather than game one, that's what I'm going to do. Um, third action is going to be broker. Last action is going to run here. I'm going to take the four net damage and then break uh, three, four. How many four net damage? Yeah. How many cards you got? Yeah. I'll let you keep this one. Some amount. There they go. And then while well, it's static, three. This was the uh, silver lining protocol. Yeah, the card I don't know. There how it was works. no silver lining there. Mine? Though. Yeah. <laughs> Jam out as many agendas as you can, as fast as you can, yeah. <laughs> until that broker comes calling. Uh... <laughs> yeah, we're just going to put. Uh, actually, we'll put one on and gain two money. Yeah. Classic Netrunner player. You built some nice servers here. You got a, you got a, you got a strong future in... Building things? Corporation. I guess that's good if you're the CEO. Building a corp, yeah. Yeah. If we ever get to the point where we, uh, we're in this world, Covenant will be doing very well. We got the brick built, the brick wall. <laughs> um, first, second, third is going to be cards. I know you don't technically do that. But you knew it. But you do that. Lebowski knew it. Broker on. Again, I'm going to start my turn. You had one shot, one opportunity. You better lose yourself. Let it slip. In the moment, you want it. Arms are heavy, etc. What do I have to do to get rid of that guy? Uh, pay four in an action. That'll eventually be worth it. Um, come pay off some of these loans, would you? Mm -mm. I hear their collection agents have organ preserva packs and dull scalpels. That's awful. It's advanced three times. Touchdown, Will Robinson. <laughs> Employee empowerment, I can choose to draw an additional card at the start of each of my turns. I can also click to draw two. But mainly three points. First action, Jack and Joe are going to draw three. One important difference between Broker and Katie Jones, Broker's not unique. Not unique. You can have lots of Brokers. Brokers. Second action, draw. 
My deck's looking thin. I have a game plan. Third action, precision bribery, numero dos. Oh, it's unique. Probably can't do that. Uh, third action, broker. And last action, I guess I'll go ahead and draw since I kind of punted that turn. Mine? Yeah. I got I gotta give you some things. Zero, five. Oh, it's Crypsis. Good old Crypsis, break anything? Let me see if it's at all more no, it's not more efficient. Bummer. Two, three, four, five, six. Almost there. Alright, let's install res a political coup that's an agenda that's the wrong card <laughs> oh it is an agenda don't worry about just that put it down there <laughs> i am gonna put it down <laughs> install hope 12 credits gets me into that server <laughs> advance and gain the money i thought it was an asset because it had the click to gain credits ability yeah well i've got a very distinct uh game plan that i'm looking for here so we're not going to run into that thing. First action is draw. Second action, I can't play this. Draw. Third is draw. There it is. Last is broker. Cluster Fox saying, question for you guys. What's your take on a three card limit in Netrunner opposed to the no restrictions in original Netrunner? I mean, I feel like a limit, it restricts that building, but it also prevents absurd things from happening. So... It's just kind of a, a safety net that I don't know why it wouldn't exist. I think the other side is just from a practical collectability standpoint. But originally, when it was no limit, collectability meant you might want any number of copies of something. Uh, but when you're doing non-collectible, you know, if you wanted 10 of a card, it, it just gets real, it gets weird. Fine? Yeah. Draw a card. Okay. Uh, advance three times. Yeah. <clears throat> score a political coup it comes into play with 12 credits on it I can take a click to take two off of it no take three off of it how interesting okay personal finance win here we go we get a one big turn First action, take the broker. Five times three is 15. Second action, score, gain four. Third action, play a broker. And then fourth action, I think I need to take a crack at something. Where's the point? R&D. <laughs> Now's the time. I'll play two for a quandary. A quandary. Skeleton pass keys. Wow. You do very poorly against that. <laughs> yes, it does. Pay three. And then break for free. Break for free, yeah. Neural Blade, I'm going to take a net damage and then uh, break it. So 3 4 with Matador. It might not matter. I, I, let me make sure before I do that. 4, I can break 1, and then it's 3 with that. So that would be. So take the net damage or not. I lose 4 next turn. Do money matter? It doesn't. So I'll break that as well. Okay. Break, break, break. Break, break, break. Break your boo. Score it. It's a two. Corporate downsizing. My turn? Your turn. You're at five. I draw a card. I go ahead and choose to draw an extra card. Okay. 
Do you have any way from stopping yourself from being tagged? On the board? Yeah. Why, no, I don't. Is that relevant? <laughs> We're going to play a Trojan horse for two. Play only other runners stolen agenda last round. Tag them. Well, this is interesting. There's a tag. <laughs> Let me think. Uh, then I'll pay six for Urban Renewal and do five meat damage. Get out of here. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Well, you know That's what? That's the full Netrunner experience right there. And I do think that it, in the end, in the end, um, it's probably a better fate than dealing with the, lo the loans. Yeah. At least it was quick. At least it was clean <laughs> and quick. So maybe, maybe in the end, it was actually just a blessing in disguise. Yeah, I think that that actually those three games sum up Netrunner pretty well for me. You were playing that deck. That you saw what it's trying to do. It's yeah. got a gimmick. It's a, a lot of loans. You go quick. You get agendas quickly, and then you just don't have money, and you use data dealers to like you use your work without money. Yeah. yeah, and this is like this is kind of. I feel like this is definitely the like. If you have to, this is your end game. But otherwise, I was playing a lot of early loans to like take one shot at R and D. It's like you can't do yeah. that. But sometimes I don't know. Yeah, like I played it one time when I like needed the credits to get in. But like I was also playing where I had to have money, so I, I wasn't even trying to set up for that end game. Yeah. But again, so the first game was pretty classic Netrunner to me, and then the second game was the Agenda Flood, which we also mm -hmm. see in Netrunner. And then meat damage through Score Sherth and at least the LCG was the same. It was that's another piece of the game that was getting played. Um, so that that really I'm surprised that the nineties game holds up this well. It's hundred percent it. It's I'm, the whole thing. I mean that's yeah. the whole thing. And uh, I, I, it's crazy this came out 25 years ago. Like, to really think about this being invented 25 years ago. 100% true. Unreal. Yeah. There's a, a, someone saying, Jason, I only used Junkard BBS once. It's true. There was a number of times where I had, like, uh, inside job or running interference on top. But it just it wasn't the right moment. I was going to try to pant Zach by, like, getting it back in hand and using it again. But it never quite happened. So, unfortunately, that, that didn't work out for me. Uh, but you could see how a card like this that recurs, it's actually, it's pretty okay with the with the balance of the game. I'll bet there's some decks that would make this miserable. I Absolutely mean, miserable. Honestly, even the uh, pay five or pay three for nine card. Mm -hmm. So if you pay three for nine and two actions and you can pay one and a click to get it back. It's weird though, because then it's three, four, five, six, six for nine. It's a click for, it's two clicks for three. That's not bad. It's like, what was that? What was that card that did Magnum that? Magnum Opus? Two for no, two? No, it, uh, it was the one that drew and gave you a credit every time you did it. Yes. You remember the one that we always had to decide uh, which one was better? Uh-huh. It wasn't the professor, but it was some kind of academic I, kind of thing. I remember, I like, like uh, whose face was It was five costs, mm -hmm. and you did it, and then you drew a card and gained a credit every time you used it. It was uh, very strange. What's the name of that card? I'm going to remember it. That was in that and Magnum Opus were in, like, Every deck, I, either one was any of the every deck I played. Also, this junk card BBS. So, like, this is the kind of card where professional contact, professional contact, and yeah, not professor professional. Yeah, that's right. So, this is the kind of card where you could definitely it, it makes like trashing programs way less good. Yeah, because like, oh, I'll just get it back. That's huge, right? It, in in Android Netrunner, like losing a program if you didn't have the right like the cards were not super easy. Deja Vu is the one I can think of. That would just be like, oh, I'll just get that right There's back. Deja Vu, and then there was Shaper's um, Pay 3, get one out of... Like yeah. you could play it from Discord. Yeah. Yeah, something yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, by the way, my Bugatti server I had set up for you, was that Dark Knight? Let's take a look. Hold on, we'll zoom in on it. Yeah, it was It was Dark Knight, so it's a century that you just have to deal with. It's just all of them... It, the funny thing about all the icebreakers, at least by the late game, which I assume these decks are like later on in the game's history, a lot of them had this plus five break, plus five for three. Yeah. And then this was three. So, like, there's definitely some math going on, but I almost always felt like it was four or five no matter what ice you were flipping. Pretty much. It's yeah. very taxing. Um, then there's Firewall, which is just a standard. Another one. It's at three. four. It's a three of a pile. Yeah, so you have pay three. And then Keeper was the code gate. So I had all three types. Uh, and it's a four. So you'd have to pay three and then you can break it for mm -hmm. free. So it, it was a good, and then each of them gets a the one, plus extra one. one tax. Extra three on top, yeah. So that's just like a heavy server to get you into. just had to let Chibi do the work. This this deck definitely feels like the kind of deck that is sitting there like, you know, just kind of poking around, and then you go to do that score, and it breaker, breaker, loan from Chiba, run it. Feels like that's what this deck is yeah. doing like two or three times a game. Matt was saying that basically it's like high risk, high return, like you just go. Yeah. And you just, at any point, you can just go get it. 
Yeah. Because especially now that I know Chiba doesn't kill you when you're at zero, it's like you just play that and you trigger broker the turn you need to get in. Mm -hmm. It's like you play that, you trigger broker, play an icebreaker, and go. Yeah, or don't even play it, Once you get the suite, you just go. It's kind of like, this is kind of the stim hack of, mm -hmm. of the game. Except I love having that long-term downside. That's a fascinating thing to put in a game like Netrunner, which is an economic game. You actually have to deal with it like a loan. And it's like, ah, oh, man, it's great now. But now, over time, I'm getting worse. It's, just, it's a ah. heavy penalty. Well, hey, this you was super back fun. Up? Yeah, thanks, everybody, for joining us for a little look at Original Netrunner. Thanks again to Matt Garrett. Matt, you're in the, the YouTube chat there. We appreciate you so much for uh, introducing us to the game and, and everything else. Uh, and for everybody watching, thanks so much for joining us. Netrunner is still near and dear to our hearts. Check out Nisei Project. They're still continuing the kind of Android Netrunner, but I guess it's probably not still Android because that would be a bit weird. Um, but the the Netrunner project essentially lives on. So it was original Netrunner, then it was Android Netrunner, and now Nisei is a group of players that came out of Android Netrunner that are now taking it over and running with it. So check that out if you want to play. Jinseki.net, also you can play online. Uh, there's tournaments happening. The game will live on in some capacity forever. It's too good for anyone to let go of fully. Uh, and then we might see an official version again at some point, and whether it's skinned in sci-fi or not is really the, the main question. And uh, apparently the World Championship for the the, gen, the Nisei version of the game happening this weekend. So I'm sure they'll be streaming stuff. Yeah. So if you want to watch more, you can check that out. I don't know. Uh, Project Nisei is how you find them, and I'm sure they'll be posting about that all over. And if you can't find it based on that information, then they have done a bad job. So that's on yep. them. Love you guys. All right, take care, everybody. See ya. Stay safe.